Tonight, I want to start uh, uh, a small series. And uh, it's going to be on how, how to walk by faith. How to walk by faith. Um, one of the most important elements in our Christian walk is walking by faith. I won't say one of the most important, is is the most important one. Why do I say that? Of course, none of us here has seen Jesus physically. None. If you have, you've seen the Holy Ghost reveal him, but you haven't seen him physically. Mm. And no one here, no one, when you had the gospel, you said, okay, get this Jesus, wherever he is, bring him out here. Let me talk to him first. Let me interview him before I give my life to him. It's like a fairy tale, isn't it? You go to some of these countries I go to, they ask you, this Jesus, does he live in your house? Where are his family? Where are his parents? It's like a fairy tale to some of them. That a man came and died for us. Because... He doesn't want us to go to hell. He loves us so much that he gave his life for us. How did we become Christian? How did we accept this story that looks ridiculous in the flesh or in the natural? Why? By faith. That's why faith is the most important. We accepted him by faith. We take the promises of God by faith. We believe he's coming again by faith. We live by faith. We read the word of God by faith and believe. We go to the prayer room. We don't see Jesus physically. He hasn't been to our home to shake our hands where we can get the assurance. But we believe him by faith. And the word of God says in Hebrews 11, 6, 4, without faith, no, it is impossible no. to please him. So I usually like to read the Bible the other way. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So that means that faith pleases God. That means faith pleases God. So we want to start this journey of faith for as long as it takes us. Faith pleases God. Hebrews 10.38 says, The just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10.38. The just shall live by faith. And then we have Habakkuk 2.4. The same thing. The just shall... In uh, Hebrews 10.38, if anybody draws back, you know what's going to happen to him. But Habakkuk 2.4 says, The just shall live by faith. And 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. So it's very important. And there's no way we're going to talk about faith without looking at what the Christian dom calls the Hall of Faith chapter, which is Hebrews chapter 11. Mm -hmm. Chapter 11. So we know that our walk is by faith. Everything we do is by faith. We pray by faith. We believe by faith. We accepted him by faith. We take the promises of God by faith. We believe he's coming back again by faith. So faith is important. And it's very important to do what? To feed your faith the word of God. Because the word of God is the fertilizer that grows your faith. Because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The reason why some of us struggle so much is that we walk by sight and we walk by feelings and we walk by circumstances. If it feels good, do it. If I don't feel good, I won't do it. If I feel like giving an offering, I give it. If I don't feel like giving an offering, I don't give it. That is why a lot of Christians are still baby Christian, even though they've been saved for more than 15 or 20 years. Because 
the faith work is something that is not consistent in our life. So let's look at it. Faith is the eye that sees the invisible. Faith is the eye that sees the invisible, is the ear that hears the inaudible, and is the hand that touches the intangible. That's faith. That's a better definition of faith that I memorized like 25 years ago. Faith is the eye that sees the invisible. You know what the, the word says? Believing, I mean, seeing is believing. Yeah. That's what the word says. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I want to see. Even Thomas, Thomas said, yeah, you are. Thomas was not where he was supposed to be. Jesus told him what to do. Thomas was not there. He went to Kroger or maybe to Publix or somewhere. <laughs> and then when he came out after shopping Publix, Jesus had already appeared. He wasn't close to the word, the instruction. Oh, if I can only see just by touching, if I don't touch, no. So the number one thing we need to take in tonight, if you're writing it or not writing it, is to know that faith sees the invisible. It's the eye that sees the invisible. Oh we don't see it, but we believe. The Word of God says, believing is seen. While the word says sin is believing. Faith is more real than anything we know. So to walk by faith, you have to see something way in advance. Every invention that has been created or existed by faith first before it came into existence has already been conceived in somebody's mind somebody's vision before it actually manifested in, in itself. I saw myself preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ when I was a teenager. I gave my life to Christ. I visualized myself. I was a young man when Billy Graham came. At that time, I didn't know what salvation was. And the song they sang, was, I went to the stadium had no clue. That stadium, that song stuck in my spirit for many, many years. They sang it and they sang it, they sang it, they sang it, they sang it in that stadium. But when I gave my life to Christ by faith, when Christ picked me, I saw myself preaching the gospel. It was my desire. Because on the other side, I was stubborn, so stubborn that it took God's people praying and praying me into the kingdom. I, I know a lot of you would have similar testimonies. So as that young, young man, I began to read the Bible with a couple of other youth. I want somebody to read Hebrews 11. 1. Sister Terry, are you here? I don't see Sister Terry. Somebody read Hebrews 11 verse 1. Brother Matt, Hebrews 11 1, or anybody who has King James, or Joseph, Hebrews 11 verse 1. I have new King James. All right, it's okay. Read 11 1. <laughs> now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the mm -hmm. evidence of things not seen. not seen. Okay. That's the definition. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In fact, the Wemot translation says, faith is the title deed to God's promises. I like that. It's the title deed to God's promises. So, somebody gives you a title, but you haven't seen the house. How do you know the house belongs to you? You haven't even seen the house. But you have, you have the title to the house. 
So that's what faith is. You have the evidence, but you haven't seen the actual house. So we have to see in our spirit before the manifestation comes. We have to see it. faith will turn your visions into realities. It will. When you operate by faith, your visions will become reality. Why? Because you're seeing the future. As a young man, I didn't know what it was called. I didn't know. I knew it was faith. But I acted it. I just, you get it. You, you all have these testimonies when you came to Christ newly. It was easy to believe everything you read in the Bible before we started living in doubts and all of that. You just had simple faith and, and you move. That's where God wants us to be. You are seeing your future before the manifestation of that future comes. I remember sitting down in front, not sitting, standing in front of our home when I had been saved newly. And that crazy anointing was on me. I was just preaching to everybody. Even if a dog could hear me, I would stop the dog and preach the gospel. It was just, I call it crazy because it was just, it was ferocious. I stood there and proclaimed that I was going to go places in preaching the gospel. And my desire at that time as a young man was to go. When I finish, I would go back to my, that was to the country of origin and every other place where the door would be open to preach the gospel. And even having a television station. I had those dreams written down as a young man. My faith. You went, you went, I went through a detour, a couple of them. So if you do not see it by faith, it becomes difficult to manifest. You have to see it. You have to see the vision. So faith is seeing before the manifestation, not seeing in the natural, with the natural eyes. It's actually believing that God would say, I would, would do. As you keep believing him, guess what? The manifestation will come. And there will be obstacles to your faith. We'll talk about those later. There were those who did not believe that I could preach the gospel, that I was qualified. Even though at that time, as I saw myself going places, I began to do what I needed to do. The scripture union was sending me to, to high schools and universities. I didn't have university education, <laughs> but I had the anointing of God. And I, I went wherever I was sent preached the gospel, was enjoying it, and particular group still thought I was a pretender. So it's very important. Now the next thing, though, how we work successfully by faith is sometimes God will tell you to do things that do not make sense. I want everyone to hear me. You want to work successfully by faith. The first thing we say is that you've got to believe it before you see it. Oh, it's not that I did it my way. No, 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 no. You have to do it God's way. I did it my way. It won't work with God. I know it's a popular song, even with politicians singing. No. I did it my way. It would not work. So, guess what? When you walk by faith, God would lead you, tell you, or make you to do things that don't even make sense. Or say something to you to do that you don't even understand. You, don't, you can't even, I mean, if you talk to a rational human being, people will not understand why. Why would God even tell you something like this? It doesn't make sense. And that's when you uh, get to your, what is that, people around you, so-called mature Christian, they try to talk you out. 
because it doesn't make sense. So to work successfully by faith, you got to do those things that don't make sense when God tells you to do them. Let's look at some of it. Hebrews 11 verse 7. Brother Joseph, read. Or Hebrews 11 verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house, of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Rajo, read it again, please. Okay. Yes, seven. Yes. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Mm -hmm. God, God, God. Does everybody see that? God told Noah to build an ark. And remember, no rain. And it doesn't make sense. How can I build an ark when it had not rain? We, we, if, I don't think even Noah knew what rain was. <laughs> they hadn't seen rain. And the only way you can have an ark is when you have a flood. So that nobody, it did not make sense at all to build an ark when there was no evidence of rain, much more flooding. You see? But what did Noah do? He obeyed. Mm -hmm. Because of Noah's obedience, we are here. We are alive. Because of Noah's obedience. He obeyed. How many times did God speak to Noah? One time in almost a hundred years. Can you believe that? Once. <laughs> Today we have all kinds of Bible the editions and all the help, New Testament. God spoke to Noah one time in almost 100 years. And what God told him to do did not make sense. You don't build an ark when there was drought. But Noah did what? Obeyed. Noah obeyed. And then Abraham, in Hebrews, uh, I mean, Genesis 12, verse 1. Brother Joel, can you read Genesis 12, 1? Right there. It's Old Testament. I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis 12, verse 1. Yes. Now, now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. Okay, continue, continue. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham de departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Aaron. Okay, let's stop there. Do you, do you get the gist now about <laughs> obeying God? Because mm -hmm. you're walking by faith when it doesn't make sense? When mm -hmm. absolutely doesn't make sense. First of all, build an ark when there was no evidence of rain, and this guy was doing it. He didn't question God. He didn't go back to God again. Just after once. That's faith. For almost a hundred years. And then Abraham, in case you're on this line, you're saying, oh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, I'm retiring. I'm going to retire. You know, I'm not going to. Now it's okay if you retire from your secular job, but there's no retirement in the kingdom. You know how, how old Abraham was? 75 years old. When God called him, you just we just read it. Seventy-five. 
Life begins at 75. Amen. Amen. That's what I told Byron's mom. When God healed her, she was 75. That was 14 years ago. 14 years ago. Life begins at 75. Abraham was called. There are many people are called in their youth, and but he was 75 years old when God started dealing with him. Can we imagine? You've lived in a, a community for so many years, the retirement age. You are known in that, and all of a sudden, God said, leave that community and just go somewhere. God didn't tell him where he was going. God didn't give him any direction. God didn't give him any specific things. Nothing, no details. Just leave your people and go. And what did Abraham do? He obeyed. I always said obedience is what? God's dynamite. He obeyed. And God gave him a promise he was going to bless him with a child. 75 years old. Having a baby, God gave him that promise. He waited another 25 years. Talking about faith. You see, faith working successfully by faith which means that we're going to have times when God tells us things that do not make sense and we need to obey it as long as it's coming from God. And the Bible said he took a lot with him. That's, that's a different story for another time. But you know the story that as long as Lot with Abraham, God never spoke to him again. Mm -hmm. Because when God called him, he didn't say, take Lot. Some of us are taking excess luggages with us that God is not asking us to take. Anytime you obey God, there are some element of risk involved. Some people just want to sit and everything will just fall on their laps. And they all have everything and good are all. No. There are some, some type of risk involved in obeying God. But it's a calculated risk. It is. He went, didn't know where he was going, and uh, for many years. And then God began to give him. So sometimes God will tell you to do things, and you just start obeying, and then he start guiding you. God will not give you a five-year plan overnight. I mean, he won't open it all overnight. He's not going to tell you everything he wants to do in your life the next three years at one time because you and I do not have the capacity to take it all. So he's going to lead us, but we're going to walk by faith. That's an example of somebody who obeyed God when it didn't make sense. Let's read uh, Brother Joe, Hebrews 11.29. Hebrews 11, 29. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Mm -hmm. You see that? That's another example of uh, obeying God when you're walking by faith. He told them, he gave them the blueprint, how to do it, what to do. God did not part the Red Sea before they got there. He said, as soon as your feet touches the water, I will divide it. That's steps of faith. It does not make sense. Nothing whatsoever. But they obey God when it doesn't make sense. And what happened? The Egyptians came, oh yeah, if the Israelites could do it, we would also do it. Let's go. <laughs> and what happened? They were all drowned. They were all drowned. A miracle of God. I had a story of a, a man, I think from Dwight Thompson, a man who, who was questioning the, uh, the drowning of the Egyptians in the river. He said, you, you every time, you guys talk about yeah, you know, talk about they walked, they walked across Red Sea, they walked River Jordan, all this thing. And the sea 
was only six inches of water. He said, just to discredit what God is doing. The sea was only six inches of water. And uh, the brother he was try talking to said, well, that is even a greater miracle than the first one. Because think about God drowning the Egyptians in six inches of water. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God drowned the Egyptians in six inches of water. That's a greater miracle. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible it's incredible God your faith will be tested everything God tells you to do there will be a test of faith most of the time in what he's telling you to do but you've got to make sure that it's from God first of all it's very important so many things he will tell you to do to strengthen your faith to test your faith to build you to get reward, look at all these people got rewarded. Noah, Abraham, Israel, they got rewarded in obeying God. When you walk by faith, you're going to surrender to him. There are things we don't know in this life. There are things we can't explain in this life. I just got born again right after the war. I was, you know the story. I cannot get tired telling it. A young man with no no theological education, just trusting the word of God. Was told to go to the Muslim part of the country, people that we lost the war to, and go there and preach the gospel. I mean, I didn't know enough to argue with God. <laughs> I've just been a baby Christian. Took my Bible and, and just went. Talk, talked to my mom and she cried again for the second time because I joined the military the same way. I just went. Didn't know my left hand from the right hand. Didn't know anybody where I was going. The only thing I knew was I needed to catch a train. I needed the name of the, name of the school is still called Central High School. I don't know if it's still in existence. I needed it. They gave me the name of the school. How to get there by cab from the railway station. And what to do. Beyond that, nothing else. He never told me that, man, these guys will come to behead me. If he had told me that, I would say, God, can we just talk this thing over? Can we just, can we just, are you sure <laughs> you're sending me? I'm not sure I'm the right guy. Send my brother, send somebody else. Send my enemies, you know, let them get beheaded. He didn't tell me anything. I took his word and went and had a phenomenal ministry there. And I did it, neither, little did I realize that God, those were the formi formative stage or stages of my work with God. God was teaching me how to rely on him by faith in obedience. Those were the formative years. I didn't know. When I look back now, I say, ah, was that why he did what he did? Those were the years he was training me to understand his voice and the rewards of obedience. You see, so it's going to happen. It doesn't make sense to me to go to that Muslim area, but if we disobey God, we will miss all the blessings. We will miss all the fun that's attached to obeying him. I went there. He did the miracles. He was healing people without me laying hands on them as a teenager. I didn't think it was anything special because I thought that's, that's how every church was supposed to be because it was in the Acts of Apostles. I would go back and just live my normal life without even thinking that God was trying to do something deeper. Obedience is the key, one of the keys to walking by faith. The next thing we need to look at is Another thing we need to look at is this. When you walk by faith, feelings cannot be relied on. I don't know even how to put it better. The next thing is walking by faith successfully cannot be by feelings. Okay, I think that's a better way. To walk by faith successfully, feelings should not be the element. We cannot do it because we feel it. Oh, brother, I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like 
going to church today. I just don't feel like it. I, I just don't feel like giving an offering. I just, no, it's just, no. It's not about your not feeling it. It's you are looking at the money that is going to be left after you obey God. Because I told you, I'm going to talk about money next time. Money is God's test of character. He uses money to test our obedience and character. Money. So I'm going to give you the instances in the Bible next time. Oh, I just don't feel like giving an offering. I mean, this guy is going, and I, I, I just don't have it now. So if your feelings cannot be trusted. I guess that's what I'm saying. They cannot be trusted. And sometimes things will not always work out the way you expect it to work out. It doesn't always work out. And what do we do? We persevere. When we persevere, we do the things that ordinarily people don't want to do. How many times do you wake up and feel like reading your Bible? How many? I'm telling you here, being honest with you, sometimes I just don't feel just I just don't feel like reading the Bible. I don't feel like doing any of that. I don't feel like praying. I just I just don't feel like giving money or my money to go feed the widows. You know, why why should I go through this trouble? You see, that's feelings and that's the flesh, and that's why we get defeated over and over. There are times when prayers don't seem to work. Remember, see the way I put it? Prayers don't seem, not that they don't work, but there are times when you've prayed, you've done everything, it just doesn't seem like something is moving. And then that's when we need to do what? Persevere. When things don't turn out the way. When prayers are not answered the way we expect it to answer, even though we've done the right praying and all that. So your feelings will work contrary to the word of God. I remember when I was talking to a guy about fasting, he said to me, I, I, just, I just don't feel like fasting, I mean, or led. I said, how long have you been saved? For more than 20 years, if I remember correctly. I said, it's not because you don't feel like fasting. It's because you're listening to your stomach and your flesh. That's why after 25 years, you, you don't feel like fasting. You've been listening too much to your stomach. I said, just look around you. Decisions are made over food. There may be a picture in the White House now. They are around eating table. I mean, that's, I'm not condemning it. I'm just telling you. What's happening? It's not just in the U.S. You go to the United Nations, they make uh, decisions. It's around food. Everybody sits, dinner table, and all that. There's nothing wrong about it as long as you're working with God. But I'm telling you, what if that the food is not there, the coffee is not there, and uh, some people may think twice before they go to that meeting. Is the consciousness of our, of our mind, what has been put in us, societal consciousness, our surroundings, it makes us just go in the opposite direction. But I'm here to tell you tonight that the word of God, walking by faith, faith is more real than your feelings. Your feelings will lie to you. They will come and go. They would like to, if you only pray when you feel like praying, you are in trouble. If you only uh, give when you feel like giving, you are in trouble. If you only read the Bible when you feel like reading your Bible, you are in trouble. Your faith is deficient. It is. So we need to understand that tonight. We need to. David committed adultery. And the woman conceived. David was 
a mighty man of God. He repented. He fasted and prayed for the child to live, but the child died anyway. The child died. That was devastating. But David said, well, I fasted and was hoping that God would show mercy. Since the child was now dead, just give me food. Let me eat. I will see him in heaven. David did not abandon his faith like so many do. It's not a criticism because I'm telling you, there was a time when my life was going in just circles. I didn't backslide. And everything I asked for didn't happen. I mean, just things were. I prayed and prayed. And things were not just going the way I wanted it to go. I stood on the promises of God. <clears throat> All I wanted and nothing. They were just going in reverse. I got discouraged. That Sunday, I remember, I used to live in, uh, in uh, Bradenton. That Sunday, instead of going to church, I decided I was going to go play soccer. I was just, I've had it, man. I've had it with God. I just, I can't be, you know, believing him for this and all that and praying and praying for people. For me, it's just, you know, I just I didn't feel like any. I put God on the shelf just for, for three hours to go play soccer. So I went to soccer field. They picked me one of the first games started 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes into the game, somebody tackled me. I fell and he hurt my back. <laughs> oh, but I remember it now. It's funny. I hurt my back and then I could hardly, I could hardly stand. They gave me, took me to the you know, hospital emergency and treated me and took me home. Guess what? I couldn't lie on my side. I couldn't lie on the left side. I couldn't lie on the right side. The only way I could lie comfortably was on my back. And when I laid on my back, who was I looking up? I was looking up. It was God. My, my, I could only face him. I could only look up. I didn't want to look up. I just wanted to just lay on my side, just take away my, you know, my face away from anything close to heaven. So I went on my left side, it was hurting. I went on my right side, it was hurting. The only way I could relax comfortably was to lay on my back and look up at, at the very God whom I had been trying to just run away okay. from. <laughs> I was looking up <laughs> after why the Spirit said, okay, runner, you got yourself hurt. Now what? So I looked up. I looked up. I said, God, I'm so sorry. After a while, he just, I, I began to laugh. I said, look, at this is so comical or funny. The, the God I was trying to run away from because of yeah, just, I didn't yeah, like how things yeah. were going. It's now the one that's taking care of me and I'm looking up at him. <laughs> I couldn't look. <clears throat> I couldn't look any other way. You see? You know why successful people do work by faith? They are people who had persevered and do things other people would not do. That's what successful people that work by faith with God are people who had done not no matter how they felt, no matter what the circumstances dictated, no matter what anybody is saying, maybe you just come to your job, you've lost your job, and you'll be praying and tithing, and it doesn't make sense. You couldn't draw any correlation. And then you decide, you know what? I'm just going to take a break. Who are you taking the break from? You're going to take a break and go to the very one who is trying to destroy you. You see, we need to persevere. Sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, things don't always turn out sometimes the way we expect it. You say, oh, yeah. no, 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 this is true. You, you know what I'm talking about this year. There are sometimes the expectation of our prayers 
and do not necessarily are not necessarily answered the way we expect it. There are times it happens. There are times it happens. My wife had prayed for this uh, nephew for many years. The guy refuses and refused to surrender to Christ. Nothing. Try to encourage him, helping him establish a business and all of that. You know what? This guy could not budge. Lost my wife and me, and but just uh, giving your life to Christ. No. Was married now. And they, we are separated and all that. But a couple of months ago, out of the blues, he called me, began to ask me about how my marriage worked so well in 43 years. And what could he do? How he was open to the gospel. After many years, my wife prayed that prayer. My wife had gone to heaven now. But this young man had given his life to Christ. My wife was not here to see it happen. I just want you to know that sometimes some of those things don't happen. That doesn't mean we, we should stop believing God and, and trusting him and then come with it. No. You know why? Because God keeps his promises. But the, the, the problem is God has all eternity to answer our prayers. But we want it answered in our lifetime. There are certain things that just don't happen that way. He has all eternity to answer that prayer. Are you going to abandon that? Or are you going to continue to believe him? Because the most important thing we can do is to continue to believe him, is to continue to read the word, is continue to persevere, is continue to walk with him, no matter what it looks like. No matter what it looks like. Because God has all eternity. There was a man who was praying. He was blind. He prayed. One sister just told me, sister that traveled to Kenya, with us told me, he's her uncle. The man was blind. He had prayed and prayed and prayed. No healing. Then finally he said, God, I want to see before I die. I want to see before I die. So after he prayed that prayer, about two weeks, he saw, his eyes were open. He saw the daughter. He said, oh, daughter, I didn't know you were this fat. <laughs> <laughs> he said to the daughter, I didn't know you were this fat. Oh, my goodness. All these years. Wow, you were a fat woman. That was what he told the daughter. And then about a day later, he died. Ooh. He saw the daughter, saw everybody he needed to see. That prayer was answered. And he died. So you, you remember. Remember the course wife? You remember Rebecca? You remember all of that? That said, give me children or I die. She eventually had the kids and she died. So it's important we watch what we say when we pray. But it's also important to remember that God has all eternity uh -huh. to answer your prayer. I know somebody may not want to hear this. It's the truth. It's the truth. But the most important thing to know is that most of the things that God has designed for you to live successfully are going to be answered in your lifetime. Uh -huh. Most of them will. In your lifetime, there may be one or two things that you may not live to see. It's true. It's just life. But we gotta trust Him. We gotta walk with Him. We gotta depend on Him, because He says, "Without faith, it is what impossible. Not maybe or may impossible to please Him." So let's put it where that faith pleases God. The Bible says Enoch, God took Enoch because Enoch pleased him and he took him. I really, 
didn't think that Enoch's family was really thinking about that or was wishing that God would take Enoch from them to heaven. And so they would not have, their father was gone. Their brother or sister just left. God just took, took him like that. No warning, nothing. But they knew he's gone to a better place, but they didn't expect it was going to happen that way. So there are things like that that happen. We're going to make up our mind to trust him. Here, we were going through the nations, preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Demons set free. Demonic manifestations set free. One of my neighbors came here, sat down with, never met them. They were Uber drivers. We began to witness to them. My wife got up and said, that's your daughter. She'll be okay. Don't worry about her. She's a Catholic. She didn't even know. We didn't even know they have daughters or sons, so we didn't know. She didn't know who we are. We, just the first night of meeting here. Your daughter will be fine. And don't worry. And she said seven days later, everything resolved. Till today, they've not forgotten it. They've become one of our best friends. They are still Catholics. But they're giving their lives to Christ. We saw, we saw God's power. We saw cancers healed. We saw heart disease. We saw you go to India, you see, you go to Kenya, you see rare cancer, blood diseases. My wife took ill and went fast to heaven. I was on a 40-day fast the day she passed. It just didn't make sense. It did not make sense. She ate right. Wasn't a chronically ill person. Very vivacious woman. A, ma a woman of faith. A woman who trained me on prayer in the initial stages of our marriage. Of course, in later stages, I, I began to teach her things. But she was a jewel in the kingdom, a powerful woman of God. A woman came in, I think in Louisiana, which, and she came in, immediately she saw my wife, my wife's countenance was turned into another person. And the woman said, I don't want this woman here. Oh, please, I don't want this woman here. My wife was just saying, yes, you devil, and cast that thing out. She had stayed with a demon-possessed woman by herself in the church, arrested that woman, and that woman threw up the demons in her bucket. Such awesome power, such prophetic anointing over her life. We had a court case. Terrible way. There was no way we could have won it. She touched me on my shoulder. She said, day number two, we're going to win this case. Everything was going against us. We're going to win this case. I said, what do you mean? I said, okay, I didn't want to offend her. <laughs> so say, yeah, right. Day number two, exactly as she prophesied, the case was won. God turned everything around. She was that kind of person, carried that kind of mantle, carried that kind of anointing. And yet, she went to be with Jesus much sooner than everybody had anticipated. You see, these things don't make sense. But the most important thing is, I was devastated because I was reading my Bible, sitting in her, and all of a sudden, this uh, boom, her breath left her. I said, what's going on? She's gone, just in a minute like that. She waited for me to come because the kids were taking turns. I sat down, opened my Bible. She was gone. It didn't make sense. I was on a 40-day fast. It didn't make sense. But does that mean we're going to turn our back on God? No. No. That's why I made our promises that the widow's ministry will continue. That's one of our dreams. In our grave, I put it promised. That's why you see me going crazy, asking people to help. I'm growing my beard now. Everybody says the, I look good. 
in a white gray bed and uh, and uh, refuse to shave it until I get everything I need. You see, the only thing that counts is what we have done for the kingdom of God. That's the only thing. That's why character is not money. You can put all your money. God will test you through your money, your obedience and faithfulness. But when it's all done, it's your character is what you're taking to heaven with you. It's not any anything. It's your character. It's whatever you've done for the kingdom of God. Character is so important. It's so important. Otherwise, when he saves us, he could have taken us home. The just shall live by faith. 